Hello, hello, welcome back to Crumbling Conversations, and today I've got an unexpected guest, Mr. J Dog. Pow! <laughs> you get me? <laughs> Big J Dog. Yeah, yeah. How you been, bro? I've been good. I've been good. More thanks to God. Yeah, me putting first, so yeah, I've been good. That's good to hear. Good to hear. Do you know music or? Um, yeah, I feel like I have a lot of music stored, which is, I think, is my problem at the mm -hmm. moment. I got too much music just stored there. Just have it in my backpack type thing. You know what I mean? Just got it, got it everywhere with it. But yeah, no, nah, I do have a lot of music. Okay. A lot of music stored. Been working on a lot of new new sounds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all thanks to God. Everything's okay, been good. Okay, cool, cool. So we didn't know this about each other, but we live quite close. Yeah. Um, I live in Edmonton, and nine boy. <laughs> Always been in a in nine boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, you lived in Edmonton Yeah, I live in Upper Edmonton Okay, how was that for you? Um, just a ghetto, innit? <laughs> like, what can, there's not much you can say, just like, it's just rough It's really rough Edmonton is really a rough, rough place But obviously I feel like I don't really, because I went to a school in Enfield mm -hmm. I don't really do the the Edmonton thing, like yeah, you know I, mean? I don't really claim it like that. Yeah, you know I, mean? I don't Fair want to say that. <laughs> don't really claim it too, too tough. But yeah, you don't claim it to be tough. No, no, too, too tough. I don't. Oh, okay. I claim it, but yeah, I don't want to claim it too much. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. See, with me, I was always with the. How do I put this in the nicest way possible? Um, I was with the wannabe gangs. Okay. Of N nine. Oh, yeah. um, that that was my school. Yeah, um, it was known as Foodbury back then. That was where all the wannabe gangsters went, wanted to be from. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of knife crime, a lot of guns. Yeah, just just wannabes. It's just like every every hood though. Like mm. I feel like it's when you go to a school in in an area which isn't the greatest, you have to adapt to it. So you get forced to put in yourself in them positions sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, even if you don't want to do what you need to do, but you gotta do it to be in them positions. What would you describe yourself as a student? Like, what sort of oh. student were you? Like the popular oh. one, or were you like? I was a pain to every teacher. Okay, like that's the best way. I I wouldn't say I, I was. Yeah, I was popular, but um, I was just like the things I would do would just be. Like absurd, you get me. I would turn off the, like the teachers, like bored with my phone. Okay. So if I if I don't want to learn today, yeah, you know I me, mean? no one's learning. So yeah, I was just that that type of person. But no, I was just, just a menace, really, just a menace. But for teachers, I wasn't really one to start fights in mm. school and all of that. But I was just, you get know I me. Mean? I was just a clown. That's what I was. It's a class clown. Ah. Must have been fun going to school with you then. Nah, like, yeah. like a good laugh. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. But sometimes you hear me. Students want to learn, and yeah. I'm just doing the most. Do they? <laughs> in, in I don't know. Do they? <laughs> Maybe, but you hear me. Like some students wanted to learn, and I'll just be doing the most. But no, I will take myself as I'm very intelligent. I am very intelligent, but I just I just used to clown clown a lot. Okay, okay. See, I was I was just a nerd. Oh yeah, I was the nerd that didn't want to learn. Put it that way. Okay, but you would get your things done. Um, would I get my things done? You know what? I wouldn't. Um, I wasn't someone that did the homework. Um, okay, and I'd get detentions a lot because of that. Um, but but I'd say my school failed me in the sense that I didn't know I had dyslexia. Okay, until about uni. So that's all right. A no, good I feel, chunk of my life. Yeah, I feel like now schools take like them mm -hmm. things very seriously. Like at least me growing up, I've I had tests of if I had dyslexia, mm -hmm. or, I, I didn't. But yeah, I feel like they take it seriously nowadays. I feel like back in the day, maybe they weren't they there wasn't that much technology. They weren't that involved. Mm -hmm. So no, that's to be fair. We grew up tough. Yeah, we grew up tough because we we didn't have mental health. We didn't have. Uh, dyslexia we, we couldn't speak about our feelings yeah um th things were tough we'd see a fight we wouldn't jump in but we'd be like fight 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 no of course that 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 was tough for 
especially for a midget like me, because I was like five foot. Okay. So I haven't grown up that much. <laughs> um, didn't want to be rushed. No, but it was tough for us because we, we couldn't really speak about our problems, our mental health. Um, yeah. If we said, oh, I don't understand this, we'd feel like the biggest dumbasses mm-hmm. in the class. We'd be like, okay, let's not say anything. Let's not get laughed at. <laughs> yeah, so, no. So it was, it was tough for us. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I agree. Obviously, I, we, we're from two different, mm-hmm. completely different eras. So, I mean, growing up, I feel like, yeah, you did have that support, at least in my secondary, because my secondary mm. is very new. It oh, got okay. built in 2007. Okay, fair so, enough. So, and I didn't join until 2014. Okay. So, um, yeah, like, we had, I had all the support that I needed. Yeah. The problem that I had was I just didn't want to take it. I just wanted to be that class clown. Mm. Yeah, I mean, just wanted to mess around. But, yeah, I mean, I feel like if I didn't do what like, I'd done, I probably wouldn't be who I am now. Mm-hmm. So, but I feel like I'm a serious person when it comes to serious things. But Now, for me... And this isn't like a disrespectful thing, but I've always seen the things as things always happen for a reason. Um, your your journey is is just for you. Yeah. So it's very difficult to say you would be where you are today without making those choices, or and if you hadn't made those choices, that you would still be here today because it would have taken you on a different path. No, hundred percent. I feel like. Even, like, when it comes down to my family, my family is mm-hmm. really big. So we have, like, I have cousins that have gone uni. Yeah. And I have cousins that haven't really mm-hmm. gone uni and don't really believe in the um, education that you need to sit down and do that. they got other qualities. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, no, I had, like, obviously, I'm the youngest of my generation yeah. of my cousins, so I'm, like, mm-hmm. really young one. So I saw both sides... I saw both sides. Um, I feel like it's just down to me what I wanted to pick. Yeah. And I feel like I wasn't I wasn't someone that I wanted to burn my eyes in the library. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, some people are built for it. I just, yeah. I wasn't built for it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't built for it at all. But yeah. Okay. But you were never forced to go uni or anything by your um, family. Like, like people <laughs> wouldn't go to you. So, so for me, I was forced. Yeah. And I'd say that proudly because I'm I'm proud that I was forced and I, I enjoyed the experience in the end because mm-hmm. it got me to where I am today. 100%. But in the sense of Latin families, mm-hmm. but they want the best for you and I get that. Mm-hmm. But but there's a force behind it. Like, did they get on this? Yeah, did they get through a hat? No, literally. Was that the same for you? or? Yeah, yeah. No, my mum, yeah, I mean, she, in her eyes, you, you ain't going to be successful if you don't need uni. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me. And I feel like, you see, my, I feel like my sister got it more mm-hmm. rougher than me. With me, she eased off a little bit when it came that she noticed that I was, when I started doing the music thing, you get me? And I started like really taking things seriously. She noticed that I didn't, I wasn't one to go uni. I wasn't, mm-hmm. I wasn't one. I feel like a lot of people are forced to go uni and then that's why they drop out so soon. Yep. So they drop out because they it's not what they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know I me mean? and they're scared of what their parents would say. But I feel like I was really clear with my mom when I told her that yeah, you know I me mean? uni really wasn't for me. And mm-hmm. I was like, would she rather me ha- like me stay at home and yeah. actually produce something, or go out to uni and f about how yeah. loads of people do? Yeah, you know I me. Mean? So yeah, no, nah, she did force it a lot on me though. Okay. At the start, yeah. <laughs> so where did you end up working? <sighs> So, work. Was it like retail or? Oh, like... work. You know, I've got kicked out my first three jobs. Oh, damn. Yeah. First three jobs I got okay. kicked out. Um, <laughs> so, my first job that I get kicked out from is um, working in heat and tobacco. Like, heat and tobacco. Okay. Uh, so, you had to, like, go to the... You had to go to, like, an off-license. Mm. Maybe a little store there. And then, yeah, just offer, like, yeah, I have heated tobacco, you get me? Yeah. That didn't work out. Okay. Um, they put me in an off license right next to my cousin's house that is the same age as me. So, obviously, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cousin's next door. I want to go check on him. And that uh, might, might or might not have <laughs> slipped too many hours in my cousin's <laughs> yard. <laughs> but, 
yeah, no. Nah. And then the second job where I worked in warehouse mm-hmm. and I used to rap, like I used to do, when I was taking the music thing serious, in the aisles, I used to rap. I used to have like everyone there. I used to just rapping, rapping. So obviously mm-hmm. they saw that I wasn't taking my job seriously. Yeah. And then, yeah, I worked in Tottenham. Okay. I worked in Tottenham Stadium and that. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I've I've had pretty like hefty jobs in them sense. But, yeah, and they haven't been good. <laughs> they haven't been good still. I mean, you're doing what, you're, what you love now, so yeah, it, it's all worked out for you. Yeah, yeah. No, 100%. I feel like it builds character. Yeah, you know I mean, going, going to jobs build, builds your character and, yeah, you know I mean, everything. I think every experience does. No, 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I feel like... Obviously, when I first got kicked out of my first job, I thought like, mm-hmm. my life was ending. Yeah, me, I was, <laughs> I was so sad. Like, cause like, imagine it's your first job ever, mm-hmm. and you're getting paid, and you're making good money, and then it just goes from one day to another. They tell you, you know what? Why aren't you here no more? <laughs> you get me in. Go do your own thing. Yeah. And you know what's the worst as well? Sorry, sorry to interrupt that's you. Fine, no, that's sorry. fine, go for it. That's <laughs> fine. When they when they they send you the text saying that they, they wish the best for you, mm-hmm. I just don't like you don't though. Because if you wish that you would have kept me in there. <laughs> um but yeah. Yeah, I I think I think in saying that I got fired pandemic. Okay. So 2020 from a call center because I wasn't hit my targets. Okay. And you know when you know it's coming. Oh you know, yeah. Like, you know it's coming. Yeah, you, you know, feel it. You know the meeting is coming. So I had that. Okay. And I was like, shit. Okay. But uh, pandemic, Christmas is coming. Oh. Imagine this is November 2020. Right at the end. So the 29th of November, the manager pulled me to the office. You haven't been hitting your targets. I'm like, all right, I know what's coming. Um, so I actually pleaded with him, just keep me on until I find a new job. He yeah, was like, nah, you're not. We're not doing that. Yeah, no, I think I think it should be illegal <laughs> to kick you out in November. No, like just as Christmas is coming, beginning of December. No, I have no they, job. They, sh- you should have sued them. <laughs> <laughs> should have done something towards that. Christmas is coming up, like, <laughs> you can't leave me without a job. Yeah. But To be fair, I found a job within, like, two weeks. So oh, okay. Like, it wasn't uh, yeah. that bad. No, no, that's, yeah. But that like, gut feeling is horrible. Horrible, isn't it? It's horrible. Did you get the text? No. I, so I got in, I was working in an office, and I got an email saying, oh, hon, we got a meet, we got a chat, we're going to the office. And I knew it was coming for, like, Two or three months because I was not hitting my targets. Okay. And every time I just kept getting worse from my job because I knew it was coming. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, you're not hitting your targets. You're hitting seven out of 15 out of all my targets. Okay. So that's just about under half. Yeah, no. And they were like, yeah, you're not hitting your targets. You're not going to do better. You're out. Damn. And get your stuff and leave. Like, I couldn't say goodbye. They were just like, tell them you're, you're sick and you're going home. Damn. Yeah, that's how I like. Yeah, not even a goodbye party, nothing. Nothing. They were just like, go home. <laughs> I would have <laughs> I mean, at least done a goodbye party. Like, I've been working here. I need, I need something. <laughs> you get me? But nah, nah. That's, but I feel like that's that's just a cycle, isn't it, of, of mm. how it goes. Like, you get me? Like, if one day your your boss you want you want your your workers to be performing, mm-hmm. yeah, you know I me. Mean? That's why I, like when I see it like that now, like I would have fired myself too. Yeah, you know what I mean, I would have definitely fired myself too, in them positions. I I don't think you would hire someone that that was like you, <laughs> in in the in the first place. I wouldn't nah. hire someone like me. Nah, I wouldn't. Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hire someone like me at all. I I just don't think that. Like, I feel like I'm at that stage that I don't feel like, I'm not even taking life seriously at this point. Mm-hmm. I, I am working, like, obviously the music thing and everything, but I just, I just want to have fun at this point. Uh, plus, I'm not, I'm not one to go out. 
So mm-hmm. I, I don't I don't go out to parties. I don't drink or I, I don't smoke okay. either. But I feel like I'm just exploring like everything in that sense. Like mm-hmm. when it comes to like I want to stay home, do music. You know what I mean? Just do what I need to do. You're very similar to me. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. I barely go out. If I do go out, it's to support Lucha's events. Yeah, of course. Um, I drink. I'm not drinking this year. I've stopped. I've stopped this year to look after my kidneys and my liver and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but I barely drink anyway. Um, I'm not a party goer. Yeah. Um, this is my first real project right now. Yeah. The, the podcast. You're going good though. I'm trying. Uh, no, nah, it's been good. I'm, I'm trying. I've seen you the couple gifts that you got. Thank you. Yeah, interest com- interesting conversations. Thank you, but I appreciate that. Yeah, 100%, I appreciate that. Hundred percent. And I don't really say that car. Mm-hmm. You get me like when when you want a podcast, like when you put a podcast on, it's something that mm-hmm. entertains you one, and it has to be like a podcast you can like eat while you're watching. Yeah. You get me? That's how you know it's a 10 10 <laughs> podcast. You get me? Your podcast mm. is interesting. Like, I saw the one you done. I don't know what her name is, but the conspiracy one. Oh, this, uh, Tiffany. Yeah. That was, that was good. So, I'm getting a lot of feedback from that one podcast. Yeah, that is it's a really, really good podcast. I feel like it was really interesting. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Fair enough. Thank you for that, bro. I know. Thank trust you. me, bro. I got you. Um, going back to your music thing. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember how we met? No, bro. So we met. So I saw you through a live. Okay. I can't remember what you were doing. I think you were doing music or you were just talking to guests. I can't remember. Oh. And I was like, oh, okay. This is like very early <laughs> on. Yeah. I know. Um, I think this was before I really got involved with Looch. Okay. Um, because we were never that close up until last year. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Adidas event came up last year. Yeah. And I think that was like the first time that I had properly seen you. Like I'd seen you go live, but I hadn't seen you do much. Yeah. Like I wasn't like, oh my God, J-Dog's on. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really focused on what other people were doing. No, of course you need to focus on what you're doing. 100%. Um, but I saw you at Adidas and I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. This guy's got rhythm. He's got skills. Yeah. Um. You were you the first to perform, or was it? No, no, you were the second. No, I think I was. Yeah. Because now Naomi was first. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think she was. Yeah. So yeah, I would have been the second. Yeah, I would have been the second to perform. Yeah, that um, Adidas, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, even to like today, like you think about it, like. It's it's not it's how me, like just the kid from from a hood, just being an Adidas t shirt. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy, and I feel like my whole family um went to the event. Oh okay. My whole family, like I'm talking like even my grandma, went to the event, and I feel like that's when they saw that it was like, yeah, you get me. He's doing something. He's doing. Something. <laughs> He's doing. Something. Yeah, yeah, literally that right there. But yeah. No, nah, it's 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 is it's it? amazing. No, nah, it is. Mm-hmm. And the opportunity that you get me, Lucha and Jose gave me, it's like, you, get me, you don't really get them opportunities. Mm-hmm. You get me, I feel like it's a, it's a good thing to have like in your artist CV. Hundred percent. It's it's an amazing thing. Hundred percent. Imagine having your face on. Well, not even your face. Like your what's it called? Your your skin, like your character. Yeah. On, on a t-shirt. Literally, my whole, like, you get me the chains, everything mm-hmm. on a t-shirt, and it's sold in an Adidas. Mm-hmm. One of the first Latinos to, to be on a t-shirt. Crazy. But one Crazy. of the first Latinos with, who was it with it? You? Me, Angelo, uh, Dukus, Yuli, and Enomi. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. and Cifuego. Ah. How can I forget? No, I I forgot, but Si Fuego mm-hmm. is is for me one of the one of like the the most humble and coolest DJs I've I've met. Okay. Yeah, he's he's so humble. I feel like when it comes into this industry, like you you have, you need to know how to balance it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you want to look like the artist and all of that, but you need to be humble. You need to be grounded. 
that's one of the things that you know me I'm I'm always humble with everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know me I come from a humble family. Yeah, you know me and I feel because co- I was brought up in a big family. Like even I don't really get too like not in the sense of I don't get excited, but like I have older cousins in it. Yeah. So when you, when you're telling them, oh, I'm this artist, they're like loud. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, <laughs> like, you're, you're not that, that like, stop lying, you get me, so, yeah, like. To be fair, it's good to have that, though, because it doesn't 100%. let your ego get in the way. No, at all, I, I feel like I have no, like, zero to no ego, obviously, like, I do believe in myself, mm-hmm. but with the ego thing, it's so, like, you can't have it in my family, <laughs> in my family especially, you can't have no ego because they, they shut that straight down. Shut it straight down. I know that feeling. Yeah. But with me, with my, with my younger cousins, so okay. I'm very close to my two younger cousins. Mm-hmm. And anytime I go, I'll, I've got this guest coming on or I'm planning on this guest and they're like, you won't get them. But they're saying that to me just so I don't get my ego like yeah. way up there. So if I said to someone like, um, I'm trying to think of his name. Abraham. Yeah. Uh, he's just the, the, the West London guy. Mm-hmm. So I've been trying to get him for a while. Mm-hmm. And I, I told my cousin to that, you won't get him. He's too big for the for the podcast. For me, that, that brings me down a little bit. I'm like, okay. But also humble. gives you it also gives you motivation. Oh no, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. But they don't want me to like be big headed and grow and be like. Yeah, oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. No, hundred percent. That's why you need mm-hmm. like you need them family members. You need them family members that yeah. keep you grounded. Hundred percent. You need family members that bully you. Yeah, that's what you need. Uh, I'm the youngest, so I feel like I get the most. No, I do. I get the most out of every like uh-huh. cousin. I get it the most, especially because I'm doing the music thing. So it's always like. Stop stop acting like that. Mm-hmm. You get me? Like, you get bullied. And, but I feel like that's what comes as well with a Latin family, isn't it? Always. You get me? Your biggest insecurity becomes your nickname. You get me? Or, like, your biggest insecurity is, the, like, the first thing that they say. You get me? Yeah. But, yeah, that's what... That's what it's a Latin family. But I love it, though. I do love it. To be fair, I've said this in every single podcast now. You've got to be tough... Tough skins to be called Latino. Because any insecurity you have, they're going to use it. Yeah, 100%. Mental health doesn't exist in Latin families. No, no, it doesn't. Ever. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. It doesn't. You can't have it. Mm-mm. You can't have it. You, you can't let them get under your skin. No. Because if you let them get under your skin, then they're going to carry on doing it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. My mum will always go to me, and she's done this recently, actually. She goes, this is tan gordando. You're getting fat. Oh. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I'll be going back to gym now. Uh, nah, yeah. I've I've started gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I started on the 7th of January. Oh, okay. How's that going? Yeah, amazing. I've been... I've lost six kilos. Damn. And a half from then. Get me. Are you going consistently, though? Yeah. Are you... No, no, consistently. Okay. I go every day. Um, I have two meals a day. Mm-hmm. So I have my breakfast at... um. One ish, two ish, mm-hmm. and then I have my last more seven, and I don't eat till the next day. Okay, yeah, so a bit late, but okay, yeah, no, no. The reason that I saw that 8 p.m. is the last time you're meant to eat, mm-hmm. it's really six, but I pushed it to seven, eight ish because mm-hmm. I don't eat until two in the afternoon the next day. That's hard, yeah, I feel like, but the meals, like. When it comes down to the meals, it's, yeah, then they're good, they're nice, but yeah, I mean, you need to know how to cook, you know, you need mm-hmm. to know how to cook them nicely. Yeah, you know I mean, the reason I'm big, it's his fault. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. OG goes, this is the reason that I'm big. No, <laughs> no cap. If it wasn't for his nice tacos and you get me all the nice things that he makes, because he has a page where he shows food in it, mm-hmm. but obviously, Cause I'm like, like I'm my sister's only brother, mm-hmm. so they're both always inviting me when there's like mad food. Yeah, you know I me mean? and he's posting them and everything. <laughs> now I'm just eating them, reviewing them, and it just mad stuff as well. 
Might as well be a food connoisseur now. Should be. <laughs> Get paid for it. <laughs> no, literally. But yeah, no, like, uh, the gym thing, I'm doing it more for my health, really. Okay. You get me? Um, My biggest inspiration is Big Pun. Who's that? Big Pun? No. What? You don't know who Big Pun is? Fat Joe? Oh, okay. Big I Pun. know who Fat Joe oh, okay. is. Okay. Fat Joe um had an artist called Big Pun. Okay. He he used to weigh 600 kilograms. What? Yeah. 600 kilograms and he died from a heart attack. Damn. So... For me, it's like, obviously, that's one of my favorite rappers, mm-hmm. but I also don't want to end like him in that sense. Mm. So when it comes to my health and all of that, I have to take it seriously. You get me? And the new year started, you get me? I started off wrong. Mm. So that's what gave me the motivation for it to just start going to the gym. Yeah. Definitely. 100%. I think with the health thing, that is so, so important and people don't. No, yeah. People don't take it as seriously as they should. 100%. And I put myself in that circle as well. Um, people don't look after themselves. People think it, it's pretty much, you know, you live until forever. You don't. Um, so when I was working Hornsey 2018, I was downing three to four Red Bulls a day. That was daily, and it was just like, I saw a Red Bull, I had to have it, I had to have it, I had to have it, until I started getting chest pains, and I was like, yeah, not anymore. No, 100%. 100%. Yeah, Red Bulls is, is techie when it comes to it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just, like right now, I feel like I'm young in it. I'm 21, just mm-hmm. turned 21. So I feel like i got loads of years to go, but I need to take care of myself. Definitely. So yeah, I just need to get me and focus on music, the gym. Yeah, me. That's that's what's keep, keeping me busy. Mm-hmm. Let's do what you love. Hundred percent. No distractions. Uh, <laughs> easy, easier said than done. Uh, nah, that's easier said than done. My distractions. <laughs> yeah, me. I had one distraction. Don't want to talk too much on it. What? No, that's that's, that's fair enough. Uh, but yeah, nah, it's it's. It was, it was. I think it if it happens, it happens. But yeah, yeah. If it happens, it happens. But get me. I'm not. I'm not looking for it right now. Mm-hmm. Especially after what happened. Fair enough. No, I'm making it sound like I'm hot, bro. <laughs> I'm making it sound like <laughs> a little bit. No, 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 no. But I get it. I do get it. I feel like I'm young in it. That's that's what. I'm, the thing is, the problem that like, I'm, I'm a certified lover boy. Mm. That's my problem. I, I'm just a CLB. But you get me like, I'm tough. You get me? I'm tough, but I'm a CLB. You get me? It's a, it's a combination. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. I'll take your word for it. I won't delve too deep into that. Yeah. Um, no, but I think, I, I think you, you, you've got to have some distractions here and there, but. Yeah, yeah, of course. But um, I feel like, so, like, right now, especially, mm. but, like, these are vital years. You know I mean? These are vital, vital years that I need to take seriously. To Especially into the music thing. Mm-hmm. I need to take these years seriously. And it's not it's not a thing where I don't want to have no distractions or nothing. Mm. But it's a thing where I need to focus on my dream. If I... If I want to make this happen, no one else is going to come make it for me. You know? So I need to make it happen. You know what I mean? And I'm so focused on it. So focused on the goal that I want. You know what I mean? Let me ask you this. How, how long have you been doing music, roughly? Oh, damn. Just, just like a rough estimate. Uh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, seriously, Um, two years. Okay. And what's your... Not your end goal, but what's your, like, when do you think you'd hit that, that goal that you want to hit? When I buy my mum a house. Okay. You know what I mean? When, when my family's good. Okay. When we're not living in, in the hood no more. Okay. That's that's when I say I, 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 like I've made what I want to, that's my goal. Can I give you a bit of advice that 
I got given, and, and to me, it <laughs> wasn't hitting until until it actually hit. Mm -hmm. So I always got told, focus on yourself and not on the people around you. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I got told that, I was like, but I want to retire my parents. I want to get them a house. I want to get my, sit my dad a car, the one that he wants. Mm -hmm. And I was always thinking about other people, but I wasn't thinking about myself. Yeah. And then last week, I had, I had the beautiful Katie on, who, who I'm really good friends with. And she said to me, Han, what does success look like to you? And it finally hit. It's mm -hmm. not about bit making money. It's not about getting my parents um, a house or a car or retiring them. Mm -hmm. It's about being happy. 100%. And um, doing it for me. Mm -hmm. um, I, can, I, I can do all of that. In the future, a hundred percent. Yeah. But if that's my end goal and that's my focus, mm -hmm. then I'm gonna be worrying too much about when I'm gonna hit that, rather than being like, oh, actually, I can relax and I can be happy. Oh, be being yeah, I do understand where you come. Like mm -hmm. you're saying, like, be happy with the little steps you take instead of focusing so much yeah. on the end goal. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. I do. I do agree with you because like. Even the little steps that I've taken now, mm -hmm. like Adidas, two festivals, Ministry of Sound, mm -hmm. it's things that you get me it's like crazy, yeah. like, and especially like I'm so young and I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just see it. It's 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 when you when you think about like when I start thinking about all the things that I've done in the music industry, it's. Like, it's a lot uh, more yeah. than a lot of other people have done. Yeah, no, it is. Obviously, I wouldn't like want to put it like, oh, I've done all of this, I've mm -hmm. this, this, that. Not like brag about it, but when I look at it internally, like the things that I've achieved, it's, it's a lot. It is. It is a lot. It is a lot. And I think that that's the main focus of, of, of everything you've done. Yeah. Focus on those small goals that you've done, mm -hmm. and you're gonna see a, you're gonna be a lot happier, and you're gonna see a lot more happiness within you. Yeah. Um, I I didn't see that for the last three years. I've been focusing so much on becoming someone and doing the things that I wanted to that I wasn't seeing the results. I wasn't happy with the results I was seeing, but I wasn't seeing the achievements that I was making because I was like, I'm not hitting that goal that I want to hit. Like for me, I wanted to be a motivational speaker. Okay. Um, I was doing Instagram lives. I wasn't hitting the numbers I wanted to, but I was still hitting good numbers. Mm -hmm. Motivational speaker. I was being called by everyone on Insta, mm -hmm. but I wasn't seeing that, so I wasn't happy with who I was. So I was just say, okay, all right, yeah. Be happy with that, like the small achievements. The small achievements I've done, yeah. No, I'm I'm more than grateful. You get mm -hmm. me. I'm more than grateful that you get me. I'm yeah. grateful to my family, grateful to mm -hmm. my team, of where I came. Cause like a lot of things is yeah. Like if it wasn't for you, wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of things as well, like my, the motivation that my family have given me, mm -hmm. the dedication, the time, the effort, the money. You get me. It all comes under the play. Like mm -hmm. of what I've done. If it weren't for like my family. And my team, I, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't even be sitting here. You you probably wouldn't even know of me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, to be fair, I think I met you, or I saw you or heard of you, first year of the pandemic. So that would have been 2020. 2020. Yeah. I, that's when I released my first music video. Uh, in 2020, I released my first. My first ever music video I released in 2020. Mm. I remember even like even when it comes to like my first music video, you get me, my cousin paid for it. I mean my older cousin paid for a music video. So it just shows like how tight our family really is. Like when when they got like a young cousin, they obviously, yeah, they bully you and everything. Yeah. But when it comes to like things that you want to do, they support mm. you hundred percent. Yeah. You get me? So yeah, again, it co it goes back to the if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was sixteen, in in them times. So, 
I wouldn't have. I had no money to make a music mm-hmm. video money. You know what I mean? But yeah. But you've made big, big moves. You have made huge moves and yeah. people don't realise that. Yeah, I feel like also like with the moves, like, in a sense, i got a lot to prove in it. Um, to be fair, I think you've proved a lot of things. Yes, yeah, I, yes, I know. Um, mm-hmm. I proved it in obviously the when when I'm doing the shows and all the charisma that I have, mm-hmm. and you get me at, at the way I bless the stage with like just full energy. But I do have a lot to prove in the sense of I haven't released music. You get me? I haven't released music, and um, obviously they see this kid. That's young. Mm-hmm. Why is he getting all them opportunities and get me? He he hasn't even released music. He's getting sponsored by Adidas and he hasn't released music mm-hmm. in the past year. So I feel like, yeah, I do. Obviously, it does come with a good thing and bad thing. So I do have a lot of weight on my shoulders to prove. You get me? Mm-hmm. I, I can't really reply to that just because I'm not really in the music scene. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, but if I was to say anything, you remind me a lot of, I don't know if you know, Jamie. Yeah, yeah, Jamie. So he's got like great music out there, mm-hmm. as do you, but he doesn't release for the sake of releasing. Yeah. And I think that that's the same with you. You don't release it because, oh, I need to put a song out there for people to hear. You want to perfect it, you want to make sure it's, it's, you know, people want to listen to it constantly. Mm-hmm. People want to, you know, vibe to it and make sure it's so high end quality. Yeah, it has to. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. So when you say, why, why is this kid getting all the opportunities, but he isn't releasing music? Mm-hmm. It's because people can see the, the work that you do, yeah. and the potential that you do, the potential that I have. Yeah, I think that's. Like, in the sense of, like, when it comes to shows that I've pulled out to every show, mm-hmm. um, I've sh- given it, I've given it my 100%. Mm-hmm. Although it's crazy because I'm going to admit something here that I haven't ever said that. I, me, obviously, my, my brother-in-law, um, he's my, like, backup singer mm-hmm. type thing. We've never rehearsed for any shows. Never. <laughs> never rehearsed <laughs> for no shows it's crazy I've never rehearsed for no show I've all, and it's gonna look like I'm not serious about it but I feel like it's, it's, it's like boom say you do the boxing thing mm-hmm. you have this whole strategic plan when you go and box someone as soon as you get punched your whole plan is out the window so what's the point, like for me at least, me having a whole plan of rehearsing, 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 yeah, it's going to make it better. But as soon as like, you get on that stage and as soon as you see them people and your song comes on, your plan's going to be out of the window. At least for me, you know, mm-hmm. my plan's going to be out of the window. And you get me, like I try to give always 100% to every show, give it 100% energy. Charisma, because mm-hmm. that's what I'm known for, really. Yeah, you know I mean, I feel like I'm known for my charisma. I'm known for, like, not being that kid that's shy. Mm-hmm. Well, like, that's a lot. What a lot of people think when, like, you're pretty big, you're gonna be pretty shy. Get mm-hmm. you know I me, mean? and then this kid just comes out and just starts get me full charisma. Yeah, you know I me, mean? <laughs> <laughs> all of it. So, yeah. Like, that's, that's about what I feel. Are you extroverted or are you more, like... Obviously, you don't go out clubbing, don't drink. No, no. That, that's a little bit drink. introverted, but are you more, like, extroverted in, like, a social scene? Um, a bit of both. With people that I know, mm-hmm. you hear me, I'm really ongoing and you hear me loud. Yeah. Energy. You get me? I'll be spotting my, my friend for no reason, innit? <laughs> you get me? So I'm really outgoing. But uh-huh. when it comes to like, say I have to perform just before going on stage. Yeah. Or like I'm in a like in a club because I'm performing or this, this, that. 
yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling in the corner. Yeah, me on my own. Like, and that's the thing when when it comes to like um shows, um, again going to the topic of shows that before I go on stage, I mm-hmm. can't eat nothing, drink nothing. I don't even want no one to talk to me. <laughs> you get me? I'm so focused on bringing out all my energy. You get me? Bringing mm-hmm. out all my energy. And it's crazy because I think for the for the first festival, that remember there's two festivals that... Yeah, every year. Yeah. The, for the first one that happened last year. Okay, yeah. I got there at, what, like 1 p.m.? 1 p.m. and okay. I, I I didn't perform until 8 p.m. and That's that a bit early and, <laughs> and it was it was literally <laughs> it was literally seven hours of non-stop heat. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously I went there because I wanted to um see Ocho set, the okay. Bencho set, you get me, the, the man them set, mm-hmm. and, you get me, I miss it. I wanted to just show support, like yeah. When it comes to like, I'm not really a person that I feel like there's a lot of envy in the scene yeah me and i i'll say it here i don't envy anyone i i love what everyone's doing in that sense but yeah it comes back to the to the energy thing i just concealed energy for mm-hmm. seven hours which i think yeah me pretty impressive <laughs> should go on the world record book or something <laughs> <laughs> give me my certificate or something <laughs> conceiving energy that's a long time seven hours yeah seven hours to wait for my set and then i went in i went on stage and it's like I literally just came in, energy was full there. Yeah, you know I me. Mean? I done. I done my thing. I done my thing. I'm happy. So be fair, Lucci's events are always. Yeah, of course. Are always lit. Yeah, of course they are. Every every event that he has, are, mm-hmm. it's lit. They always so loud, isn't it? Yep. It's so loud. You know what I mean? They the way they treat you is so loud. Yeah, you know I me. Mean? And that's that's the good thing. I feel like with. Luch and Jose that they're, they're people that are open and open towards anything. Yeah. And they're serious about what they do. Yeah. They're really focused. They yeah, they know 100%. what they want out of like the events, they know what they want. Yeah, they got they got serious game plans. Yeah. They got serious game plans when it comes to all of that. Mm-hmm. Serious, serious game plans. Hundred percent. I'm gonna ask a bit of a personal question. Oh, <laughs> God damn! Um, and it's more towards your sister more than anything. Okay, my sister. Um, how much does she su- does she support you? I- I'm I'm trying to compare here. All right, cool. That's the only reason. So, if it wasn't for my sister, mm-hmm. I would have rolled in today in a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a Nike Tech. Balaclava on, it's cold outside, it's cold season. Mm-hmm. In that sense, she's the one that really picks out okay. clothes to wear. My hair, she does my hair. You get me? Like, when I send her, like, clothes that she thinks that I should like, mm-hmm. buy. You get me? No, she's, yeah, she's one of, like, I feel like in the music thing, I have three people that are the core. My okay. cousin, yeah. my brother-in-law, my sister. Okay. They are the core of me. The music, everything, everything surrounds it around them free. You get me? Without mm-hmm. and if one goes, it, well, it ain't the same. You get me? They all like, kind of like play a part mm-hmm. towards it. So yeah, no, she's hundred percent. Oh, okay, so she's been like a huge, a huge part of it. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Plus, like me and my sister have a fourteen year gap. Damn. Yeah, fourteen year gap. So it's like. She always treated me like I'm one of her kids. <laughs> literally. <laughs> like literally, they both treat me like I'm 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 their kid. Like they give me everything, everything mm-hmm. I need, you get me? Like it's, and it's a lot of time because they they obviously have their life. They got mm-hmm. their kids to look, you get me, and they still make time. You get me? That's to love, bro. To, no, a hundred percent. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But yeah. So yeah, she is she is she is a core part of, of me. That's pure love. No, literally, a hundred percent. I wish my sister was like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish my sister was like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's the age gap as well, isn't it? Mm. Like 
the age gap is so big that you get me. Mm. And I feel like, like when it comes to music and my sister, I grew up on, like. Yeah, what 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 sort of music did you grow uh, up on? Because I think me and your sister grew up on the same similar type so of music. So we, I grew up on. Yeah, I grew up on my sister's music. Is it? Yeah, hundred percent. I um, grew up on Ja Rule. Okay. Fifty Cent. Yeah. You get me. BTK. Bump bump bump. <laughs> okay, that one I don't know. No, one. you don't know BTK. BTK, no. P Diddy. Yeah. Yeah, me. So I I grew up on Ashanti. Yeah, me. All okay, of, okay. All all of the like back back in the day. Music, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me. I I grew up on that. Yeah, me, and I love it till today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me. I I hundred percent rather listen to many men than anything. Yeah, me. <laughs> many men hits you. It does. <laughs> it it does. It, it hits like fifties. Actually, <laughs> telling you like you, you're singing the song. But yeah, nah, that's that's the type of music I grew up on. Okay. Yeah, me. So, you know the, the reggaeton from today? Mm-hmm. Would you rather the old reggaeton or the current reggaeton? Because oh. I grew up on the gasolina, rompes, um, uh, we seen the proper we seen here, and then the Zio, Zion, um, who else? Nina Sky. Nina Sky. Evie Queen, yeah. Didn't really listen to her. No? No, my sister did. I didn't. Yeah, nah. By the way, you lot can talk as well. It's fine. <laughs> you can you can interact. <laughs> it's absolutely fine. <laughs> um, So, it's it's a 50-50, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I love artists from, from now. And I love artists from, from back in the day. But if I... Huh? You were a daddy Yankee. Oh, I was a die-hard daddy Yankee fan. Yeah, I was a die-hard Daddy Yankee fan, but I feel like now... Favourite song? Favourite song? Bossy. Don't think I've heard that one. Damn. And then the... And then the... That was all I'm thinking. Yeah, that one. That one. That that hits hard, though. That hits different. Yeah, that one hits hard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> no, literally, hundred percent. I was a diehard Daddy Yankee fan. But like now, yeah, I mean, uh, I prefer other artists. Over, okay. Over him, yeah, I me. Mean, I prefer more. Um, don't know. I would say more like rough artists. Like when it comes to like rough artists, I'm talking. Nikki Jam. Okay. But old Nikki Jam. Okay. Yeah, you know I me, mean? not new Nikki Jam. Um, there's also an artist that I like. I don't know if you might know him. His name's uh Mexicano Siete Siete Siete. Uh he's I need to put you on time. Uh, I'm not up to date with the nah, current music. To, yeah, no, no, it's an old school, old school artist. Okay. But he is literally like as rough as it can get. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? As rough as it can get. And yeah, I feel like he he's a big inspiration when it comes to like my whole persona and everything. Okay. Okay. See, I think I think the the problem with me is I I grew up on my mum's music. Okay. And so my system always makes this joke that I grew up in the wrong era. So <laughs> I should have been born I should have been born nineteen eighties, nineteen sixties, and she should have been born like ninety three. Okay. Yeah, so I'm I'm more of the Juan Gabriel, Camilo Sestos, yeah. uh, Vicente Fernandez, uh, Vicente Fernandez, Elenita Vargas. Okay. I, I'm sort of that that era of music. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. My my mom, like in a sense of music, I, all I remember is her listening to Romeo Santo Ventura. <laughs> yeah, me. I don't. I don't really remember like <laughs> modern. Oh no. Like, did you grow up on on yeah, so we had a mom that taught us that was that like a really hot way to do it? Yeah. I don't know. I'll I'll still act to sleep then that you know I mean? uh, even even to now though, like I mean mom's tries to put some music when I'm I'm still sleeping. 
<laughs> in my pee, you know. <laughs> but are yeah. You, are you a night owl or an early bird? <sighs> it's right now. I'm an early bird. Okay. Because I'm going gym at seven in the morning. Okay. That's so not too bad. it's it's like now I'm I'm an early bird. But yeah, no, nah, I would stay up. Yeah, the early birds get the best worm. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Um, but nah, like. Back, I would say a couple months ago, I'm staying awake until nine in the morning. Get me? That's when the best music comes on. Get me? That's when I write lyrics. Oh, what, overnight. Yeah, that's like that is when the purest everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's when you start listening to your heart. <laughs> 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 no, no, but um, yeah, that's when when I really write music. At, it's at night. Get me? I can't really write music during the day. I don't. I don't, I don't catch the vibe of it. Mm-hmm. Unless it's a one here, one bar here. But not like proper songs. Oh, no. Okay. 100%. Okay. What what room are you going to? What what? What gym? Uh, the gym. Edmonton or Tottenham? No, Edmonton. Ah. You go to the Tottenham one? I used to. I'm okay. going to run this one sister now. The one Pure Gym. Oh, Pure Gym. Oh, yeah. what's, what's the difference between Pure Gym and the gym? Price. What's, what's Pure Gym saying? Pure gym, when I drained, it was £16 for six months. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit nuts. Why am I paying 35 then? You're paying 35 yeah. for the gym? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I had to pay £10 up front and 25 a month. Yeah, that sounds about right. I feel like I'm getting ripped off. <laughs> that sounds about right. But it's because this is, is pure gym 24 hours. Yeah. So... What am I paying twenty five pound for if it's let me six? To be fair, it's six it's for six months, and then I'm gonna leave and go back to the gym. Oh, is it? It's cheaper, yeah. Oh, do you like? Oh, the gym is cheaper now. So the gym is cheaper overall, but oh, okay. because the Simon Sisters one opened recently, mm-hmm. it was half price. Okay. So I'm not getting ripped off. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. So I'm not getting ripped off. Okay. That's, no. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, the gym, for me, is a place just to take out everything. Mm-hmm. You know I mean? Yeah, I mean, everything that's on my mind, everything I'm going through, all the stress, everything, you take it out in the gym. You know? That's how I take it, at least. Yep. Yeah. You know I mean? Yeah. Well, twice as hard. Very true. Well, <laughs> yeah, what are you saying? Okay. I want this to- I, You didn't bring the topic up, but okay. I'm going to bring it up. Go for right, it. Listen to this. Juanita, yeah. Mm. So cool. <laughs> we will be in relationships, right? Yes. Okay. And it's always your partner's friends, the ones that get involved. But every Latino knows about Juanita. Do you guys do Juanita? Do you guys do not, the Juanita? Not, not in thing? Colombia. No? Like, no? I've never heard of it. Well, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what do you say? We just go like pepito, pepita. pepita. Oh, okay. okay. So yeah. Juanita, Juanita, okay. So yeah. so yeah, that's where it ground. That's where the groundwork mm-hmm. comes from. But hear what I'm saying. I think I invented yeah, single-handedly, mm-hmm. a Latin version of Karen. Okay. Cool Juanita. Yeah. Juanita is the inner friend. Yeah. Of your girlfriend. The one that's get, always getting involved. Okay. You get me? The one that always wants an opinion. You get me? This, this, that. You get it? So moral of the story, mm-hmm. don't be a Juanita. You get me? Yeah. Oh, Juanito. You get me? But, uh, yeah. Nah, mm-hmm. Lidge. But yeah. Yeah, that's the moral of the story. You get me? That's, I really wanted this to come up. Yeah, me about fact, I didn't know this even existed. Yeah, no, it's I single-handedly invented it. <laughs> I'm letting you know from now. <laughs> so if you ever see a, a friend that is too inner yeah. in something, be like, don't be a Juanita. I'm gonna use that for now. <laughs> I'm gonna use that at work. <laughs> literally, <laughs> like, what? No, nah, literally, when you you see someone's trying to get involved, don't, bro, don't be, you hear me? Don't be a Juanita. <laughs> don't be, you hear me? No, nah, but yeah, for like. Yeah, I feel like I have them. The moments. Like, the moments. They, they, they will come to us. 
eventually. Yeah, I feel like I have them. We have them. We have those moments them. here and there. You're making it sound like <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> I'm gonna go away now that you're 21. I'm gonna be like Canada. Nah, they're it's gonna so get worse. That's gonna get worse. They get worse. Then you start inventing things, and yeah, in they do get worse, unfortunately. But yeah, no. to, to be fair, I think we're all Karens in some way or other. At, at one point in our lives, we're all a Karen. Yeah, at one point, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. It just depends how you see life, and mm, depends on the situation. Yeah, as well. I mean, I feel like it's hard. Like for me, it's hard, like it's hard to get under my skin. Yeah, you know I mean, like personally, mm-hmm. I don't think that it's that easy to get under my skin. I've heard it all, and okay, so I don't like I've been like through it and everything, so nothing really gets under my skin. What about in a relationship? God damn, <laughs> um, <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> don't be a funny, <laughs> don't be a funny. <laughs> No, when he does get under my skin, though. <laughs> nah, you know what? Forget what about I just said about... No, when he does get under my skin. There we go. Yeah. When he does get under my skin. Yeah. Oh, I just... Don't want to be that guy, though. Or be just, like... Just too inner. Get me in. I feel like that's the problem. I think a lot of people want to get involved. That's it. Yeah, but not even just, like, in relationships. And everything. Like, and everything. I say you wanna get you know I me. Mean? You're you're doing something, of certain. You know what I mean? They wanna be involved. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Don't be a Juanito, Juanito. You know what I mean? More of the story right there. <laughs> but yeah, definitely. But yeah, that's that's the topic I wanted to bring up. The don't be Juanito. Like, no, nah, literally, Juanito. yeah. Don't be don't don't, don't be. get involved. Is pretty much. Yeah, because if you see someone doing their thing, yeah. just don't get involved. Like. <laughs> Yeah, me. Just don't get involved. Oh yeah, because because obviously the way I use it is mm-hmm. for the inner thing, but like in Chile, you use the as my sister was saying, like when you don't want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I was like, I was now nah, I was I was still yeah me eleven, which is pretty old <laughs> to know that they're talking about you like. Like, they would describe this Juanito person exactly like me. And I wouldn't realise it's me. Like, yeah, no, I, it took me a while. Uh, to, to be fair, in Colombia, we don't even describe a person. We're just like, El Pepito Pola, you start doing certain things. I'm, I'm like, I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that me? <laughs> That's exactly what I would think. That's exactly what I would think. Exactly. To the T, that's exactly what I would think. I'd be like, well, what that? Got a lot with this yeah. one, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, we got a long call. Like, we should get a connection with this guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, me. no, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. But yeah, like, apart from that, yeah, growing up in a Latino, tough, tough, yeah, very tough. It is tough. You got to be thick skin, like I said, hundred percent. 100% you have to be. But then I feel like when, when someone's when you're born, mm-hmm. you're so a man, you're different. You get treated differently. I feel like the fact that he was born here, I was born back at home. I don't know. I don't know, you know. I was born back, I was raised here though, like 18 months old. I was born here. I just know that I was the favourite, so... Okay. I know I was the favourite as well. Yeah? And me? Yeah. That's, that's a way to say you wasn't the favourite, obviously. <laughs> you allow your talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she tried to say right there. She was like, allow the talk, you're not the favourite. From who though, favourite from what? Nah, I was a favourite to... Nah, in the family, nah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was a favourite. But I am certain Arnie's favourite. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I would say to him, you never you never gonna see different that would be Chinese. Like I don't mm-hmm. know if different or different. Yeah. To be fair, fourteen years different. Like you ask him about his he don't know about Hanny and mm. Hanny and Emma Green back in the days, bus station, everything like that was the place that everyone was 
Yeah. Oh, we, we used to hang in Jubilee Park. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel like that also comes with me not going to school and, and man. Oh, yeah. Fez. Oh, I, I don't know. I went to school in Enfield, so I was like, quite out of there. You get me? Mm-hmm. I'd quit out of there. Quit, quit out of there. But yeah. So, quick last topic before we wrap up. Okay. Do you think Edmondson has changed in the last five, six years? Um, yeah, it has, like, it's changed for good and worse, you know. I'd say worse, but I'll let you say your points. Um, good in the sense of, I don't know, they opened up a new JD. (laughs) 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 That JD used to annoy me. Like the one? The small JD and and the green. No, there's a big one now. So you know where the La Fruta Dia is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Literally, right, big, right diagonal. Yeah, they open a big JD there. No, no, but on serious points, like, I feel like there's a lot of being done to the community, mm. but I feel like with the violence and all of that now, yeah, man, it's, 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 it's techie, you know? You need to know, you know what I mean? Like, you need to always be aware. But that's, I feel like that's everywhere now, though. You mm. get me? Like, in, in a sense of every area that is, um, in a sense of not, like, in the hood, you need to be careful. You need to have that awareness. So, I feel like it's just like every other hood. Um, Why not? I, I wouldn't say I that. Feel like I feel safer. You think Edmonton safer? No, as in, growing up in Edmonton, we felt, we didn't feel... You know, in danger. We didn't. We weren't looking behind our backs every time we walked out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's what they. But that's what I feel like the youngers are. Uh, have to low key prove, innit? I've That's not heard that word in years. Youngers. Oh. I haven't heard that in years. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah, that's what, like, they got to prove something. You know what I mean? I feel like everyone's mentality now is you need to prove something. You know what I mean? You need to prove what you're worth, innit? What, what you're made of, bro. You know what I mean? So that's, mm. that's how I feel like it's made the hood worse. But mm. at the same time, you know what I mean? We're all, that's another thing, like, we're all from, like, we're all from humble, like, you get me? Mm. We're from humble, like, hoods and that, you get me? Like, so, when someone sees me working, don't, oh my God, guess what happened? What? So, boom, I'm working in Tottenham, yeah? Yeah. Imagine me carrying boxes mm. in Tottenham. These times, I think it was right after, the next day of Ministry of Sound. Okay. So I was a superstar last night, mm. and now I'm carrying boxes for Tottenham. Yeah. <laughs> now listen, to the, it gets better. It gets better. I'm carrying boxes and that. Some mm. guy comes up to me. He goes, uh, "Yo, J Dog, what are you doing? <laughs> like, broski, I'm working. Like, <laughs> I'm just working in it. Like, I feel like people, what people, like, obviously they see me on stage and mm. all of that, but I work in it. Like." You get me? I feel like a lot of Latinos, but obviously I want to speak about me, but a lot of Latinos, we ain't made it yet. You get me? Mm-hmm. We ain't made, we ain't made uh, the certain amount that we need to make to, like, you get actually live off it. So I have to, like, you get me? When it comes to music, you need to put mm-hmm. towards it. It's like an investment. Definitely. You need to put money towards it for it to, mm-hmm. to blow up. And I feel like that's, that's what some people don't understand, isn't it? So if you see me working, just let me do my thing, in it. <laughs> let me get my night shifts and get the hell out of there. But yeah. I agree. Yeah, I think that's... I think people aren't, aren't willing to invest in themselves that minute. Yeah. Yeah. That's the biggest thing I've learned as a life coach. People aren't willing to 
them investing themselves. They'll always come up with an excuse. Knowledge. That's true. Knowledge, my team. No, but but if you think about it, people will go, I've got kids, I've got no time, I work a nine to five. Five to ten, you know, w- w- what are you doing? I feel like if, if, if you want it, you get me. If you want it, then you're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like when it comes to things like, if you put 100% yep. towards something, mm-hmm. and I'm not talking, oh, I tried my best. Yep. I'm not talking, oh, maybe next time. If you put 100% towards something, and I'm talking like every bit of like soul and everything you got in it, yep. there's no way you can lose. 100%. I agree with that. There's no way you can actually lose. But if you're going to be like, oh, um, I tried my best. Mm-hmm. I don't. I personally don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I don't want to be that person that, that says that I tried my best in the music for yep. the end of the day. It wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's like right now my point is like, like what I'm seeing is I'm going to go full for this. Yep. You get me? I want to be successful. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. And I can see you doing it 100%. Yeah. Thanks. You've done a lot. Um, I've seen. Parts of your career, not all of it, but mm, yeah, of you're doing bits, bro. No. You've got an amazing team behind you. Your sister, brother your brother-in-law. No. I'm a cousin that's in Chile right now. A cousin. Yeah. You're doing bits. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 the people that support me is... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got... Can I promote that? Go for it. So, Evil Twins coming out on the 3rd. February. Okay. February. Evil Twins. So it's a project between me and um my best friend and that. Okay. Yeah, my best friend. Um he's an artist as well. It makes it sound like yeah. oh <laughs> I just uh, who what's his name? <laughs> Chrome. Chrome is his name, yeah. I mean shout out Chrome, my broski. Cool, my cool. brother. Um but yeah, that's on the third of February. Cool, I'll promote that if you want. No, nah, yeah. That 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 record that's gonna come out from that is, is Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a first step to go back into a routine. Definitely. Yeah, I me mean, and start releasing all the music I have, really. I have a lot of unreleased music that if I don't throw it out there, it's going to become mm-hmm. all season. Is that a bad thing? Yes and no, because, um, yes, in the sense of with, with social media, mm-hmm. everything moves quickly. Yeah. So you have to be. Okay. You have to be on on everything. Mm-hmm. Whatever the latest trend is, you need to jump on it. Okay. You know what I mean? And I feel like if I let some tunes that I have go past too much, it's going to look like I'm trying to bring it back. Okay. You know what I mean? And I just, like, right now, I'm just looking for the most, like, most unique way to to do it. Like, I feel like the the, the unique genre that I have is, it's actually a genre mm-hmm. I invented. Nah, I, I say a lot, like I invent a lot of things. Nah, nah, but it, it wasn't actually me who invented it. Yeah. It was Jose. Okay. Jose invented it, the idea of it. I perfected it. Okay. Um, It's called Drill Don. Yep. It's a mixture between, 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 <laughs> between, um, it's these drills, between drill and reggaeton. Something that I haven't heard. Fair enough. Yeah, me and it's yeah, it's for like every day I, I try perfect it more and more. Mm-hmm. But yeah, me when I start releasing music under the drill done genre, yep, it's it's unique. It's gonna hit. Yeah, yeah, it's unique because you drill is uh, obviously American based, mm-hmm. but it's been blown up a lot in the UK. Yep, you get me. It's, yes, yeah. and old reggaeton is it's a Latin thing, so. Both of my roots, like in that sense, go into that. But yeah. Cool. So. <laughs> yeah, no, hundred percent. You got you gotta be unique. Yeah. For like, you get me? You gotta be unique. If you're not if you're not unique, then you're just gonna be one. A sheep. I think it's just that what you like that you really really Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. You get me? Like, you need to have them commercial songs mm-hmm. sometimes. You know what I mean? And songs are a bit lovey-dovey, but you need to make them, <laughs> innit? Like, it's what people listen. Mm-hmm. You get me? People are listening to that. Any events coming up or that you know of? At, anyway? um, that I know of? No, nah, not at the moment. You know what I mean? Um, again, I... Yeah, I feel like I just want to, right now, like, focus on releasing music so people have somewhere to go to when yeah. I do make them mm-hmm. big events. Because I did that, again, I did that festivals were amazing. Mm-hmm. But from my behalf, I should have had music out so people can go and... Listen to them. Listen to who... Because if, like, someone might have been in a crowd and go, oh, that, mm-hmm. that, you know what I mean, that kid is good, but sees music, you no, know, like, mm-hmm. hasn't posted music in a year. Oh, this kid's on serious. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, I feel like that's what I want to build up now. I want to build my Spotify 100%. Definitely. And then, yeah, take it, take it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's learning. 100% of you. Yeah. Um, no, I've got a lot of, um, oh, you're Colombian, Pablo Escobar, that's all I got. I always have to explain, oh, you're Chilean, what's that? Imagine Chilean, you're a long country, that is. Yeah. I have to explain very well to this thing. I didn't really get that, you know. What's it called, what's her name? Alexis Sanchez. No, it's actually. Oh, Samorano. Samorano. Yeah. Chilean, Samorano, you need to explain. Yeah, I got, I got Sanchez, and the 33. Mines, yeah, that's in the Guinness World Record. You know, hard to say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, earthquake. Yeah, biggest earthquake recorded. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, but like that's how I get. I don't know. For me, it's um for the Latinos. Like, I feel like there's so many Latinos yeah. now, but personally, in Enfield, I didn't go to school with any Latinos. No, I never did that actually. Um, a lot of females though in her hands. Latinas, Latinas, yeah. Mm, most of them are. <laughs> <laughs> no, they mentioned. I don't know a few, <laughs> but um, yeah, I didn't go to school with Latinos. I, mm. Like the most that I chilled with was like, Caribbeans, and like, that was the closest to mm. us. I feel like it's the closest. Yeah. You get me? So, I don't know, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You you couldn't. Mm. You couldn't really be in the middle. You get me? So I didn't really have... um. Well, there was some, but like, you didn't really like grow up with them type thing in one of mm. your classes. You get me? But yeah. But yeah. So I feel... You know what I mean? Big J, dog. Definitely, right? But like I said, bro, you're doing big bits. You're going to be very successful. I can see that. Oh, bro. Um, like I said, you've done amazing things. Yeah. And honestly, you can't wait to see your growth. Yeah, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. The same goes to you, bro. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? Um, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, literally, don't, 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 don't forget about me when, when you start, <laughs> nah, <laughs> bro, I'll stop, put, I'll stop putting posters with this interview, like, a picture, like, yo, I was in there, like, don't let me lie to you, I was there, yeah, I was there with the yellow sofa, nah, nah, I'm, I'm not someone to forget humble beginnings, that's, that's something that I'll never forget, and people that helped, mm. that's something that I'll always cherish, yeah, Um, but I think we have to wrap up, yeah, um, but yeah, I think we you're doing amazing bits, like I said, very successful. You. You've got an amazing future ahead of you. Thank you. Um, amazing team as well. Yeah. We'll definitely stay in contact. 100%, bro. See. Um, definitely got to bring you on maybe next year, actually, just to sort of see the growth. The growth where you are. 100%. 100%. Keep it going, bro. And 
Don't yeah. forget why you're doing this and don't forget yeah, to, to stay happy. Of course, always happy. Hear me group <laughs> But yeah, bro, thank you for coming on and I appreciate you for having me, bro. Always, bro. For real. Whenever you want, mm. there's always a space. I appreciate it. For you, your family, yeah, your team. And yeah. Always got a place here whenever nah, you run it. Just I appreciate it, broski. Appreciate it for real, bro, bro. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you all will love the episodes. Go subscribe to J Dog on his Instagram. What's your Insta? Uh, J Dog J D O G G C O. And I'll put a link below. Go show the love and follow his journey. That's it. Oh, I was like, I thought it was like a little boom. <laughs> no, no, no. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it was a little...